Hi. The aim of the session is to show you how to use the automated referencing function in uh, Microsoft Word. First off, click the References tab. More specifically, this is the part that we're interested in. This drop down here is a very important one. And the first thing you should do is highlight, actually select all the content in the document. So that's Control A or Command A in Mac. Click on this. And once, this is only something you do once, click on Harvard Anglia. Harvard Anglia is the format that um, we use at MCAST because basically we use Harvard referencing. And in Word, this is the only format of Harvard referencing that is offered. So I just clicked on that, and as you can see, this changed. And finally, there is bibliography. So let's start with how to reference a book. Right, so let's imagine that I want to define operations management. So I just opened this book on the right hand side and I found the definition of operations management, which is here. So there's my definition that I just copied. I'm going to arrange the sentence a little bit here by just adding operations management is, I'm opening inverted commas to show that I am copying word by word. Because this is already part of my sentence, I'm going to change the capital T into a small t. I'm going to close inverted commas before the full stop, exactly before it. Why? Because I'm missing my citation right here, before the full stop. So a citation is part of a, of a sentence. It's just that if it's in brackets, we don't need to read it. But we need to show that I didn't just invent this definition myself. I got this definition from somewhere else. So how do I do that? I'm going to start using my citations in the References tab. So back to my References tab, and I'm clicking on Citations and Bibliography. I'm going to click on Insert Citation. And here I'm going to start using the cover page and the copyright page in order to build this section. And from the cover page, I can see that I have two authors. Now what we're interested in for the author is just the surname and the initials of the name or names. In this case, the author has two names, but apparently everyone calls this author Dan. So I have two initials, R and D. This other author, the surname is Sanders, and again, she's got two names. So the first initial is N and the second one is R. So let's imagine I had one author. If I had one author, here I would write raid, comma, r, full stop, d, full stop. So that's my first author. Notice how I separated the surname and the initials with a comma. Now I believe if you don't, if you forget this comma, I think Microsoft Word actually fixes that for you. But for the sake of being consistent, I like to include it. Had I had one author, I would stop there. Because I have two authors, I'm going to use a semicolon. A semicolon means there's an additional author. And once again, I'm going to copy the surname, Sanders, comma, n, full stop, r, full stop. So those are my two authors. Oh, by the way, something I forgot to mention, the first thing you have to choose is the type of source. In this case, the type of source was book. But had it been an article in a journal, this is what you'd be using mostly in your dissertations. So switch between book, article and a journal, whatever it is that you're using, but mainly it's going to be article and a journal. What's the corporate author? In this case, I'm not going to use it. But had it been, for example, a website, which belongs to a company, and we don't have the name or surname of the author writing that. That's a corporate author. Corporate is a corporation. In American, it stands for business, for organization. So had this belonged to um, a particular company instead of these authors, I would write the name of the company there. Or it could have been, I don't know, say the European Commission, for example. So I would write that there. Okay. But in this case, I do have authors with names and surnames, so I'm going back today. 
Title. Title is the name of the book. Now, as you can see, in this case, the book has a primary name, a primary title, and a subtitle. To indicate that it has a subtitle, I'm going to split up these two with a semi with a sorry with a colon. So operations management colon an integrated approach. Notice how all my letters are in capital letters. Had I had another word here, such as um, I don't know, an integrated approach to um, something. Two would be small. Prepositions are normally small letters. Otherwise, use capital letters throughout. You have to be consistent there. From the cover page, I can also fit in the edition, and I can already see that this is the sixth edition. If it were the first edition, I wouldn't write anything here, so I would just leave this blank completely. But because it is the sixth edition, I'm going to write six. TH. So I'm not writing any EDs or editions there, just 6th. The rest will be done by Microsoft Word. Now to fill in the city, the publisher and the year, I need to go to the copyright page. So I'm moving on to the copyright page of the book, which is here. Let me see if I can make this slightly bigger for you to see. That should be a little bit better. Right, and let's fill in the missing information. So starting with the year, that is normally easy to spot because it's right behind the copyright. And in this case, I've got several years. The one I need to use is the last one because this is the year when my book was published. All of these are previous editions. So I'm just going to write 2016 here. Then, the city, and notice how it says city and not country. The city, normally there's an address here where you need to ask for permission if you use this book. And here's our city. So in this case, actually it's Hoboken, New Jersey. So that's exactly what I'm going to write. Sorry, there. NJ. What about the publisher? The publisher is right here as well, John Wiley and Sons. And that's what I'm going to write. And I click OK. Right, and after I format it, I've got my first citation. So because I copied word by word, I need to include the page number. And to include the page number, I click on the citation, click on the arrow, edit the citation and I'm going to include the page number here which was page 2. There and I've got my page number and automatically Microsoft Word takes care of the formatting of the full stop of the comma etc. This is an indirect citation but what if I have a direct citation? Direct citation means I'm going to use the name of the author within the text this time. So for example, Reid and Sanders argue that operations management is the business function and the rest of it. So here I've got the author and there's no point in me repeating the author again at the end of the sentence. Instead, all I can do here is insert the year. That's it. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. So to do that, I'm going to References, I'm going to click on Citations and Bibliography, and I'm going to choose Citations because I've already used the citation before, I already have it. Once I open Citations, this time around I have one reference on my list. So I'm going here, Raid and Sanders, right after that, and right after it I'm going to include the citation. So I just double click that. That's all I've done. And I automatically got the citation. I'm going to close this. But I don't need the author twice right after each other. So I'm going to click on the citation, arrow, edit the citation. And this time I'm going to suppress. The suppress means to hide the author. There. 
because I copied word by word, I still need the page number here in this case. So I'm going back, edit the citation, and I'm going to include page two there. And there's another citation that's done. So that's how to cite books. The next part of the session will teach you how to cite a journal article, which is essentially what you'll be citing most of the time in your dissertation. Right, I've just opened the paper and I copied this first sentence. Now here I'm copying word by word purposely, but in actual fact, most of the time you'll be paraphrasing, you won't be copying word by word. So how do I go about creating a citation for this? I'm going to citations and bibliography, insert citation. I'm going to change the source this time around because this time around I'm using an article in a journal. And this is what you'll be using most of the, of the time in your dissertation. So author in a journal. I've only got one author, so I'm just going to copy the author. It's a good idea to actually copy and paste orders to make sure you're writing it correctly, that you're spelling it correctly. Comma, and in this case, it's a William W. And I can't stop there. The title, again, copy the title exactly as it is to be sure you're on the right track. So there goes my title. I need some more information, such as the journal name, the year, the volume, the issue, and the pages. So if you scroll up a bit on Emerald here on the right hand side, I'm just going to zoom into that. Normally on most papers, you'll find the information that you need. So let me drag this here. Journal name, there you go. It's called the Asia Pacific Journal of Innovation and Entrepreneurship. I'm going to copy that and paste it in here. The year seems to be 2016 in this case. There you are. The volume, volume 10. Number, which is equivalent to the issue, is number 1. And the pages were 151 to 167. So I'm writing that exactly as it is. Once you're done, click OK. And that's your in-text citation. Because I copied this word by word, I also need to include the page number, which I copied it from. And I just copied that from page 151. Be careful, this is not page 1, but 151. So I'm going to click on the citation. I'm going to click on the arrow, edit the citation, and I'm going to add the page 151. And that's about it with citations. The last part that's left is the actual list of references. Now in this case, I call my list of references references, but double check with the dissertation guidelines to find out the exact name. So to include all the references, I'm going to the same tab and make this bigger. So references, and I'm going directly to bibliography. In bibliography, as we've already mentioned, I'm going to choose works cited and not bibliography because what I want is the references that I've actually used in the text only. So anything else shouldn't be there. And this automatically gives you a references list. Now with a little editing, I'm just going to remove this work cited from here. Or alternatively, you can paste the title in here directly. So if I want it to be in black, it's a matter of formatting, so the usual stuff, nothing out of this world. And here, say I want them to be in Times New Roman, so I just select them, and I'm going to have them in Times New Roman. Size 12, or whatever font size you're using, and that's it. And my references are in order, and they're formatted properly. If you want to update this list, right-click on it, Update Field, and you'll get any updates. Unfortunately, every time Word keeps changing the formatting. So that's the unfortunate part. So perhaps you can change the formatting at the very end once you're done and just change it to the correct font. But that's about it with references and uh, in-text citations. Thank you and I hope this helps you. Good luck in your dissertation journey.